Hey guys, how are we doing today? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration Podcast. As always, this is your host, Damien. And in this episode, we have the final shoot of the year 2024 and also the final shoot of the season or topic this year. I'm sure you guys know what this is at this point because every episode has been cumulative. If not, in a very quick nutshell, what we've been discussing this year is basically how to take the best of both worlds or dissolve the polarization between two approaches of magic. On one hand, the overly complex ceremonial ritual magic, golden dawn kind of stuff. And on the other hand, the results-based very effective in my opinion gallery of magic chaos magic style which in my opinion is fine can be a beautiful thing and can work but after a point becomes a little too simplistic for people and instead of fighting about who's right or feeling polarized finding a more nuanced way to use the simplicity of the Modern grimoires, let's just say. This could be the Gallery of Magic, but I'm using that term kind of liberally here. And building longer rituals that, first off, keep the simplicity intact, give us the time to follow up in the world, but still train our imaginations, quote-unquote raise our consciousness, and help us grow as a magician. Without reiterating, the season itself should have exemplified that point better than I can say it. In episode one, once again, we address the question as to why, or some reasons as to why, your results magic or gallery of magic stuff may have hit a wall. Maybe because you've outgrown it, you're ready for something a little bit more in depth. Then we spoke about banishing in the next episode how to use the Master Protection Ritual to set up a daily practice where you do the sword banishing every day, you work on the Master Protection Ritual every day, not just to memorize it, but really clear yourself out and give you the ability to open up any other ritual in your life with it. Then we spoke about using attunement rituals on the daily to acclimate your consciousness towards a given goal. Then we spoke about setting intentions with sigils and making sure we're not just chasing false desires. Then we spoke a little bit about making devotional and offerings, which can be used to power up the magical cash book instead of treating it like a fair weather friend. And that was spoken about in the last video. In this episode, we're going to close out. It's probably going to be a short, sweet one and talk about now that now how to use the magical cash book to overcome lust for result. And I think it's a great way to build on what we spoke about in the last episode and some nice little treat for the audience and the, and the patient. Because it's holiday season, and let's face it, everyone is dealing with financial stress. So in this episode, we're going to specifically talk about how to use it without introducing any new ideas or techniques to get over the lust of result, create a vacuum for manifestation for the money, and most importantly, get what we want with the money ahead of time. So with that being said, let's just, let's just get right to it. I don't think I've said it much this year, but what has not changed on this channel is question me, question everything, put your own spin on these things and tailor these ideas to your own unique life, experience level, goals, and or circumstance. Hit the bell and subscribe notifications for more. We'll be back in 2025 
that will be discussed at a later point in time and or the end of the video or podcast. So with all of that being said, if you're watching this, I'm going to assume you have the Magical Cash book. It's probably one of the first products Gallery of Magic fans like. As always, I am a fan of the Gallery of Magic, but I choose to stay away from the controversy around them. And it was one of the first products I liked. And I've had some great results with it. Learned some hard lessons. For those that don't know the Gallery of Magic, there's the Gallery of Magic playlist in the upper right hand side of the screen in the drop down box where we've spoken about this, how to use it, different things. In this episode, instead of giving you a new ritual, I'm going to give you one little simple trick you can do with their existing material to help you get what you want once again. You can use this for holiday shopping. If you feel you need a piece of equipment in your life, whether it be a new laptop, a new occult book, an athame, whatever, and get it sooner than later. And then without trying to force it or being greedy, kind of quote unquote trick reality into giving you the money by setting up a vacuum of manifestation. Basically what I would do, if you take nothing else that was said this year, I would watch the last video, make a devotional ritual for Nitika. It can be short, sweet, and simple. And perform it. Maybe on the new moon, if that's your jam, to power it up. Kind of pay it forward with quote unquote gratitude, while that may sound new age. Then you're going to perform your cash book ritual per usual for 11 days. There is one key difference. You are going to write down in your entry or state why you want that money. So if you want new money, it would be Natika, 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 so on and so forth. I thank you for bringing me wealth for a new laptop. You're going to do the ritual, close the book, close with sword banish like we spoke about in the second episode this year. Do that every day till the ritual is complete. Every other day at the rate that is complete with you. So long it is done in a month. If you're more of a purist, you're going to want to do it 11 days, like the Gallery of Magic says. Once again, I view the Gallery of Magic as chaos magic, so I say, take what resonates there, focus on the end, which is consistency. Then, on the 11th day when you are done, the ritual is done. And as always we know, that's kind of the easy part, and the hard part is getting over the lust for results. Now, sometimes this can, this can be easy, especially when you don't need the thing. But the problem with magic is when we really feel we need the thing to progress in life. Whether it is a new laptop to start a podcast or just because you need to upgrade. You need, to, you need that money to take a new course to make yourself more hireable for your dream job. Or the holidays are important to you, which is one reason we're doing this. And you want to give that very special gift to that special somebody, your family, whatever. Or you need the money for that thing to progress as a magician. In any of those cases, this is easier said than done because the money isn't a treat. It's something we feel we need. And despite all the concepts and intellectual stuff about how you don't really need the thing, which have wisdom, you still feel that way and that needs to be addressed. Now, on one hand, they're right. It is not the money we want. It is the thing we want to obtain with the money that matters. That's creating that void, that lust for results, call it what you will, that malaise. So what you're going to do, and it doesn't have to be on the 12th day, but after you complete that ritual, what you're going to do is you're going to go buy the thing. You're going to go act as if pretty much. If you need that laptop, you're just going to go buy the laptop. You need that course, you're going to go sign up for it. You want the gifts for your family? You're going to go buy the gifts. It's that simple. You're not going to wait for the money, you're going to go do it. 
And while this shouldn't be the point, the point should be living your life. You're technically creating a vacuum of manifestation. And if people want to get all but Damien, so on and so forth, I don't have the money. I understand this is content. This is general information, which is why I say don't be reckless. But technically, if you read the liturgy in your cash book, there is a line that says something to the extent of I command or I invite you to rewrite the past, present, and future to bring me wealth in the amount of. So in other words, in theory, it's working in the past, the present, and the future to create that chain of manifestation where the money comes. So if you went out and you bought this thing and you think about it, it now has to rewrite the past to make that money come because you have bought in the thing preemptively that you needed the money for. In other words, if you did it for the laptop, once again, you have the laptop, Nitika now has to rewrite the past, where you have the laptop because you have the money for it. You can think of it as a reimbursement if you want. At the emotional level, what does this do? It helps you actually affirm to yourself beyond a concept that you don't need the money because you have taken an action that says you don't need that money. In other words, it's going to be kind of hard to lust for the money for a laptop in this example when you've already got the bloody laptop, right? You might feel a pain, yeah, but you'll get over it once you start using the laptop, and it's probably less of a pinch than sitting there waiting for it and not doing whatever it is you need to do. Start your podcast or do whatever tech work you need to with your laptop, right? You're basically saying, yeah, universe, I don't need this money. And beyond the material, it's the ability to enjoy my life, share with my family, learn this skill, cultivate this craft that really matters. And then when you're busy doing whatever with the laptop, that's when the money will come. Maybe in spurts, maybe in rebates, whatever. Some people are big on the idea. If you want $1,000, $1,000 has to come at once. I think that's relative to how money shows up in your life. Money is not my strong point. You can nitpick me for doing this if you want. That's your call. I don't give a shit. But... In my experience, based on how money can show up my, in my life, it will start to. $100 here, 50 there, 200 here, so on and so forth. Or if nothing else, you'll feel a little bit of pressure and you'll be motivated to do things like not buy unnecessary occult books, not go out with friends, not never, but not more than you should. And it'll be easier not to because you can be busy with your laptop now. You're going to make that money back because you're doing productive things instead of doing God only knows what to try and take your mind off the laptop, which probably costs money or time. Or use it to create a revenue stream in your life, the podcast, an ebook, whatever, that can help you make that money back. And it's just that simple. Now, in reality, sometimes, if it's $1,000, maybe 750 will show up. Maybe 500 But what I want you to ask is, depending on your circumstances, don't be foolish here, is that really what matters in life? Stressing over 250 versus versus $1,000 or 750 versus 1000 and not living your life or living your life and the point here is you're giving yourself permission to go live your life beyond the illusion 
of external circumstances. And while I'm not going to say that's all magic is, that is what it's about in this case. And I think a lot of that is really the gift of results magic. And what the New Age says when they say, if I were this thing, would I let X, Y, and Z stop me? But they take it to a level of radical nonsense. We're taking the wisdom without the stupidity. We're living from that place. We're acting as if or we're setting up that vacuum or pathway of manifestation from a quote-unquote time-space standpoint. And once again, if it's your family, what's more important, stressing about the money or having that time with your family at the holidays, if that's your dream. And that's the point I want to drive home. A lot of times when I do practical enchantments, I realize, yeah, I don't need this fucking thing. I'm going to go live my life. And that's usually when it starts to get better again. I know it doesn't sound like much, but there it is for you. So that episode's a wrap. This year was a very cumulative year for the channel. I thought it was a nice recovery without bragging on my behalf compared to the kind of quote unquote chaos or just confusion of the 2023 content. And I wasn't sharing it as some wannabe master magus. I was sharing it because I was someone who was dealing a lot with watching the results magic just fizzle out, letting it get to my head. And these were kind of the steps I was taking to quote unquote, take that power back in my life and or the joy of magic once again. Just getting back to basics, getting back into a daily practice, maintaining my quote unquote energy, attuning myself gradually to what I wanted, making sure that if I thought I had a desire, I could articulate it in paper or make a sigil, because if not, I know it's monkey mind. Then start powering up my magical objects or whatever I need to make this thing happen, which is going to be money for a lot of people with the cash book. And then doing the magic and getting on with the thing to live my life and letting the chips fall where they may. And I think in a lot of ways, that's where a lot of people are. In 2025... All I'm going to say right now, it'll probably do its own shoot, is I'm not really sure where we're going to go yet again. It may not be as cumulative. I could have some rebranding ideas that we're going to start working on slowly. And instead of announcing it all now, I'm probably going to do a shoot in January or February. I'm going to give myself a month here to recoup and reflect. I also have scoliosis, so I need some time to myself again and start rebuilding. We're probably going to do about another shoot a month because it just works better for the quality of content and allows me to work on my spiritual practice and other things I hope to be sharing with you guys at a point in the future while I'm not putting a timestamp on things. But I'm going to see you guys in the new year. I'm going to wish you guys the best with this. Just invite anyone to check out the content as they need, take what they need, Check out the Gallery of Magic stuff and more. One thing I would like to do in 2025 is maybe consider more interviews and stuff again with other people. You don't have to be an author. You want to come on the channel and talk occult. Even share two different views if you can be respectful. I'd be happy to have you. Drop a comment. Email me. If people have requests for content in 2025, let me know and we'll start addressing it. But until then, I'm going to wish everyone happy holidays. And very possibly Happy New Year. And I will see you sooner than later in the new year. Thank you, everybody. I personally found this to be the most fulfilling year of content creation on the channel. And I sincerely mean that. And I really want to thank all of you for being part of it. So I wish everyone the best of luck with this. I'm going to shut up now and get to it. And just say, happy enchantment. Thank you, everybody. Take care.